Okay, so I'm going to do a, a video today, or over the next couple of days actually. Um, today is currently a Tuesday, I forget what the date is, um, but we're here today to basically pump these six high wall splits down uh, and we're going to replace it with a Dakin 3 pipe heat recovery VRV, uh, which would be pretty cool, so I'll run you through the process of that. So we're going to start with this Dakin here. Um, you know what works really well for pumping systems down? Probes, man. <laughs> now, obviously the probe is a quarter inch fitting and the, the 410s are a 516. So I've got this Schroeder depressor here, which is a 516 size, which has the quarter inch um, male bit there. I think it's made by Refco, very handy. Now, as far as I'm aware, these things are getting repurposed, so I need to pump them down. Now, the problem with that is that, as we can see here, it is 12.8 degrees, and the only way you can pump these down is to get them to running cooling, so we'll see how we go. This is our indoor here. Um, I've got quite lucky here. This is one with a pump down function, so to get it into pump down, there's this button right here. I hold that down for five seconds, and it'll force it into cooling for 15 minutes, allowing me to pump it down um, on the cover there basically that's that button there um, but if you do come across one that doesn't have a pump down function this is on basically it's covered in dust but that's our thermistor right there and it's very technical but if you blow on it with hot air <laughs> you will trick the unit into thinking it's colder oh, sorry hotter than what it is and it'll run in cooling okay one two three four five there we go Cool, so it's as easy as that. I've flicked it off at the isolator now. We'll uh, disconnect the pipes and then we'll make it safe electrically as well, just for good measure. I've got it isolated at the unit, but need to find where the circuit breaker is and turn that off. Beautiful, so that's this one all disconnected. Now it's got to do it five more times. Cool, all right, and that's me done for today. These are all locked out, ready to go. I'll be back in a couple of days to pressure test back out and then commission, cool. All right, and we're back. It's the next Thursday, so the 1st of December. Um, mechanical boys have still got a little bit to do, but um, pressure's in the system, and I'm here to make sure that the there are no leaks uh, and get this thing on back today and maybe even charge her up. We'll see how we go. Uh, someone's very kindly left their gauges here. However, um, looking over here, uh, I don't know if I'll zoom in, but 2600 kPa, 17 degrees. Um, I've got a formula that we can use to actually work out exactly what the pressure drop should be, because it is a bit colder than that. However, I have a feeling we're gonna have an issue. So we knew it anyway, but just so to confirm, that's what our pressure should be. Look, give or take. 100 kPa based off, um, you know, losing it through your hoses or whatever. I mean, they didn't take their hoses off, but really we should be a lot higher than 1600 kPa. So I've gotten rid of the analogs that were on there and put my digitals on here because I'm going to put some more nitro in there and run a pressure test. So I'm just going to let my gauges equalize out for five minutes or so. Um, we'll sit at 2100 and then we'll start the pressure test. Got my temp clamp on. Let's go. Yeah, so pretty early on, we have a leak. Okay, so they reckon they found it. Uh, we're going again. I'll just let this settle down for a second and then we'll start the test. So because nitrogen is uh, uh, a gas that is affected by temperature as well, that's why we use the clamp. So it's measuring the temperature of the pipe to di dictate whether or not we're actually losing pressure or it's just a change in temp. So if I do, I'm going to start that and if I press enter it's now measuring my suction temp and my suction pressure and determining whether or not we're losing pressure so we'll let that go see how we go so failed the second pressure test so we're going looking for leaks um, like I said this is why we do these type of tests um, I'd rather know now than a week's time when it's you know lost half its charge and not working properly so let's go looking I'd love to know what um, people's views are on these B-press fittings. Um, yeah, I, I don't particularly like them. I mean, I've never had, I, I've 
never done an install with them um and i'm sure you know if you follow the proper practices i'm sure they could but i just you know being a service tech i'm always the one coming around following up um and i just find that i see a lot of these leak uh, yeah but let me know your thoughts in the comments you can even hear this one so as you can see we've been looking for about an hour now um i'm fairly confident with how much pressure we've lost in the two leaks we found that uh we should be sweet to go after this one so we'll let the pressure out fix the leak and go from there cool so while they're off fixing the leak i'm going to start doing some other things so start off with removing these transport brackets on the compressor again barco for the win man running for 36 minutes now minus four but it's been bouncing around the winds just picked up a bit as well so it's been bouncing around between minus one and minus four so very happy that there's no more leaks we'll get to see them back ready to back it out now but first things first oil change cool so running with the appion mega flow kit today look at these big suckers man I mean business. <laughs> Alrighty, we're up and running now. So vacuum pump connected to the Appion T, which has the half inch hoses coming off it. Uh, Schroeder core removal tools there. And for the very first time, I'm using the uh, Testo 552i. Currently got the unit on vac, which is basically just behind that wall there. So gonna come set the dip switches on the, the branch box. So we've got our dip switches on both our boards just here. So if we come up to here, we can see it says um, A1P, A2P, and over here, A1 and A2. So obviously we only have the two boards, so A1, A2. So when we're setting our dip switches, we look, uh, so we've got uh, DS1 and DS1 on A1 and A2. There's a lot of letters and numbers going on here, um, hopefully makes sense uh, but basically on the other side we've got units up to F so we've got six indoor units so we need to make sure that um, all of our dip switches here come as off which is the factory default because on means not connected so all of these are obviously connected to indoors and then over here on the DS2 is whether or not we've linked them up um, or joined them so which we haven't done so um, yeah we only really need to worry about these ones so as we can see down here Got our dip switches so all set to off there. And then over here, the first two set to off, the next two set to on, and then the rest set to off as well. So we've stalled out at about 13.50. Uh, so I'm gonna go change the oil and maybe sweep it with nitrogen. So I've just broken the vacuum. I'm just taking it up to 50 kPa and I'll let it sit there for five, 10 minutes or so. So we're, we're hovering about 135 microns now. Um, that's running with this close, so just reading the system. Um, honestly, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. It is getting a bit later in the day, so what I'm thinking I might do is I will disconnect the hoses, I'll keep the, um, the core removal tools there, and first thing tomorrow, I'll just chuck it on maybe for another hour um, while I get set up to add the extra refrigerant. I think that's all for today. And we're back. It is Friday, December 2nd. Um, I left it under vac overnight, so I, I packed up all the reclaim and all that. Uh, sorry, the uh, vacuum pump and all that. Didn't leave it um, out because there's no space and there was a potential it could rain, but it was actually a lovely night. Uh, so yeah, we're just going to vac it out again. It held, it was, I bounced up to around 240, I think it was. Um, but yeah, so just pull it back down again. Then we will get ready to charge, set the addresses on the indoors, go from there. Decay test has been going for about 10 minutes now and we've risen um, eight microns. So I'm pretty happy with that. I'm gonna start charging this thing. Just gonna carry out a phase rotation test, which is one very cool thing about the fill piece meter, makes it nice and easy. So we'll go L1 to L2, flash L3 in a sec. Mm, let me try again, L1, L2. Get L3, L123, we're good. So, <clears throat> I'm gonna set up my scales. Um, I think I said this before, but as a scale, 
the Appion one is is really cool. I like it, nice and easy to use, love the case as well. The only problem is that every time you use it, you gotta take a battery out, because if you don't, it drains the batteries in about, I don't know, a day. So that's the only flaw that I've found so far, but everything else I really like. Everything's good to go. We've zeroed out our scales. We've purged our hoses up to here. We're gonna charge through the liquid line, um, the additional charge. So I've left the, the stop valves closed at the moment. The additional charge is 4.3. Um, and hopefully we'll be able to get it all in. If not, then we'll turn the unit on and get it into charging mode. And we're away. Taking off this as well. Before I go down and adjust the indoor addresses, I'm just gonna open up these stop valves. Just gonna open them up slowly. Just turn power onto the indoors. So here's my controller here. Go into the service menu. Doing an internet address. It should. Beautiful. Well, this is the first one, so I reckon that's pretty good. Turn power back onto my indoor. So it's the frame rate of the camera is not working, but those are three solid uh, O's, I guess, indicating that there's no issue. So according to this down here, when no trouble occurs, I get that. That's what it looks like to me. And I'm just waiting for it to go blank. And the display's just gone blank. Let's get this thing into test mode. So to get this thing into test mode, we hold down BS2, which is the middle one there, for five seconds. So let's go. One, two, three, four, five. There we go. Again, you can't see it, but it says T01, so better get these covers back on, eh? So display is T02. So it is cooling startup control. Actually, well, this is what it's gonna display the whole time, so. Um, apparently it could take up to half an hour, probably longer, but yeah, once it gets to T10, everything's sweet. So I still haven't yet added the extra refrigerant, um, not just yet anyway. Finally starting to look like summer, two days in. <laughs> Added the extra refrigerant upstairs, so now I'm just gonna go through and set the time and date on these controllers. Um, yeah, there's six of them, so I'll go through and do them all. And while I'm doing this too, I'm also just confirming that the controller that I'm operating turns the indoor unit on in the room that I'm in, <laughs> just to make sure. And we are up and running. Um, I wasn't able to film as much as the last little part as I would have liked. I got a couple of phone calls while I was doing it, which lasted about half an hour. So I wasn't able to film kind of while I was chugging along, but I'll explain what I what I did. Um, it basically went through its test mode. So with these, you need to put it into a test mode first. Um, when it does that, it basically just checks a whole bunch of things like wiring, pipe lengths, um, refrigerant charge, all that kind of stuff. Went through all that, it passed fine. I then went and put it into a, um, I put it into a manual, charging mode to add the extra 2.2 kilos of refrigerant that I needed. So I'll put up a little screenshot of the of the service manual where it describes on how to do it. But basically you end up just using that little seven segment display there with the three buttons, BS1, BS2, BS3. You go to, I'm pretty sure it's mode uh, 20, uh, sorry, mode two, 20, and then you change the zero to a one. And then it goes into basically, I guess like a forced cooling thing almost. Um, then you can just add the extra refrigerant. Uh, that's what I did. I then went downstairs and changed the um, times and just the, the temps and just generally set the controllers. Um, and now I'm basically just in the process of writing down what I have done. So commissioning date, extra refrigerant, pipe lengths, just for whatever reason, if everyone, anyone ever needs to work on it again, um, they kind of have that information if it's not me coming back. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's all for this one. I've, I've now basically got it running from the controllers downstairs. So they're all set to 22 at the moment, um, just to see, you know, it's running all by itself. I'm gonna go down there in a second and turn them all off. But apart from that, I think that's the end of this one. I'll uh, take you for a quick little visual. So. So I'm still relatively new to working on VRV. So if you watch the video and you know you guys have, you think I missed something or um, could do something better, definitely hit me up in the comments um, and let me know because I'm, I'm pretty keen to learn more about these and I'm I'm excited that I get the opportunity to to start working on these a lot more. So yeah, let me know.